Um, well, welcome friends. It is our uh, Monday evening practice. And uh, if you've had a day like mine, you've had to get through your Monday to get here. And I can't actually tell you how grateful I am to be able to share this time and to be able to share the practice with you. So thank you, before we even begin, for joining us this evening. Your presence, although it may be digital, um, is uh, most certainly not missed. And I was actually, I was, it's funny, I'm going to go on a little bit of a distraction. I, I, I was having a conversation with a chap yesterday, and one of the things that came out of the uh, conversation was that um, it's quite strange that we went through a phase of our um, existence where we were connected uh, spiritually. Um, it was one of the first yugas, and then we started to separate. As we started to uh, become more materialistic as creatures, uh, we started going into mining and agriculture. Um, we kind of left the spirit behind. And we started to have this disconnect. We started to lose our, uh, for lack of a better phrase, psychic abilities. The things that we had, that direct connection. And that's when we started to get Dharma. That's when we started to get a lot of the spiritual texts and people trying to explain to us how to reconnect to the light that lives within. Yet, here we are, connected to technology. Something that we never thought could ever be an assistance in any kind of spiritual thing. But here we are, connected um, through the internet. And it's odd how it's kind of brought in a new dimension to the practice of yoga, to the practice of unity, to the practice of balance. So I'd like to give a little bit of a thanks to all of those people who have put in the hard work just to make this stuff actually work for us. Right, bringing the hands to prayer, we're going to begin in Sukhasana, easy posture. Ankles underneath the knees, head above heart, heart above pelvis. Let's get the spine nice and relaxed. And as I said earlier, hands to prayer, prayer at the heart center. Close your eyes. Let's take a few nice deep breaths to bring ourselves into this moment. To let any stresses and strains of the outside world remain there in the outside world. I'm not saying that those stresses and strains, those thoughts and worries, I'm not saying that they don't matter. But at least for the next 60 minutes. Let's believe in the goodness of our soul. Let's acknowledge the fact that our soul has guided you as far as it has. And here you are. There are times in our lives when we will fall asleep. There are times in our lives when we will not have conscious awareness. When you sleep, take no delight in blaming yourself. Take delight, however, in waking up. Allowing yourself once again to move. Self-blame is one of the deepest injuries. It's like that deepest sleep of all, the deepest darkness of all. When you wake yourself up, when you come into conscious awareness, be gentle. Ahimsa, non-violence. Peace and universal love are the essence of every single gospel preached by every single enlightened being. Treat yourself with that peace. Treat yourself with that universal love. And this practice will continue to give and give and give. I want you to bring your attention to the space in between the palms of your hands. And we're going to start to rub our hands together, just lightly. Create a little bit of friction. Today's element is the element of fire. I didn't choose this element for today. This element happened to choose me. Heat. And it is from a point of heat and pressure that the entire universe was created. Keep your hands rubbing. Bring your full attention to the sensation of skin on skin as, as that friction starts to create heat. That internal fire that we can build, respecting the process of digestion and powers of change. 
Releasing the hands from prayer. Stop rubbing them together. Inhale. Sweep them out the sides of the walls. We're now going to release that heat. Release that hand into the universe. Bringing the hands together in prayer above the head. Exhale. Lower the prayer down. Let the thumbs rest in front of the eyes. Take a nice deep breath here. Inhale and lengthen your spine. As you exhale, sigh. Oh, and lower the prayer down in front of the mouth. Take another nice deep breath. Inhale. And as you exhale, sigh. Lowering the prayer down to the heart center. Taking another nice deep breath. Yeah, we open the practice with a chanting of one om. Gently bow your head, taking the chin down to the breastbone, lengthen the back of the neck. And you should still feel maybe a little bit of heat, maybe a little bit of sensitivity in the fingertips as you press them into prayer. Push the breastbone into the thumbs, pulling the navel in, lifting the heart center up, relax the shoulders down. Setting any intentions you have for this practice, seal them in. Perhaps repeating them to yourself three times. Or perhaps just offering a little bit of gratitude out to the world. Releasing the hands from prayer. Inhale, sweep them up the sides of the walls again. Lengthen the body out. Stretch, 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 stretch. And exhale, bring the prayer down through the center line. We're going to split the hands at the heart and take the palms down towards the knees. Pull the tops of the arms back so we're sitting up nice and tall. Relax the shoulders down. We move into our first bit of pranayama and we're going to move into 36 kapalbhati, 36 breath of fire. For those of you that have not done breath of fire or need that little bit of refresher, you'll take a nice deep breath in and on your exhale, you're going to pull the navel in as much as you can, and you're going to push the air out. Your inhale is going to be passive by releasing the tension in the belly. You'll naturally drop the solar plexus down and allow the lungs to fill with air. We're going to do the first round of 36 at half pace. If you can, just breathe through the nose, otherwise breathe through the mouth. I'm going to be breathing through my mouth just to try and set you a pace and to give you a fair idea of what uh, the sound needs to be moving through the body. But it's your practice. If you're battling through the nose, just breathe through the mouth. Take three nice deep breaths just to find the rib cage. Inhale, sit up tall. Push the belly out and expand into the sides of the ribs as you fill the body up full of air. Exhale, pull the navel in, just setting us up for the breath. Nice long inhale, lengthen the spine, make sure the bum is comfortable. Exhale, relax the shoulders. And now we set ourselves up for couple bhati. Inhale, nice and deep. And at half pace, uh, pulling the navel in on the exhale. <sighs> and deeply. Exhale, relax the shoulders. Inhale, sweep the hands up the sides of the walls. Bring the hands to prayer. Exhale, lower the prayer in front of the heart center. Keep the hands in prayer. Push the palms together. Lift the elbows up. Relax the shoulders. Second round, Kapobhati, going in at full pace now. So double the pace of what we were doing earlier. Inhale deeply into the navel. And let's go. the hands, sweep them up nice and high. Exhale, bring the hands to prayer, prayer in front of the heart center. This time you can split the hands again. This time taking the backs of the hands to the tops of the knees, thumb and the forefinger together. Now bringing focus, mudra into the hands. Inhale nice and deep, lengthen the spine. Exhale, let's go. 36. Ha! <laughs> 
inhale, sweep the hands up the sides of the walls, hands to prayer. Exhale, bring the prayer down through the center line. We're going to come up onto all fours. So either rolling over the knees or swinging the feet out to the side. If you were sitting on anything, move your your props out of the way. Into our cat cows. Hands shoulder width distance, palms underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, tops of the feet into the mat. Inhale, send the tailbone out, lengthen the backs of the legs as you push the chest forward. On the exhale, tuck the tailbone in, pull the navel in, round the spine and lengthen the back of the neck. Inhale, tailbone comes up. You should be able to feel this in the hamstrings on the backs of the thighs, heart forward. Exhale, tuck the tailbone in, pull the navel in, separate the shoulder blades, lengthen the back of the neck. Inhale, cow pose, tailbone up, belly down, chest forward. Exhale, cat pose, tuck the tailbone in, round the spine, lengthen the back of the neck. One more. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Press the ground away from you. Coming back to neutral, we're going to drop the bum down towards the heels. Walk the hands back to the knees. Come up into a kneeling position. Inhale, sweep the hands up above you. And exhale, bring the hands to prayer in front of the heart center. We're going to push the prayer forward, sending out the fingers to pointing towards the front of the mat. Taking the palms to face the ground, we roll the thumbs together. And then bring the backs of the hands together. So going from palms down to the backs of the hands, then bending the elbows, bring the thumbs in towards the chest and roll through the wrists, offering your palms up towards the sky. Lovely. Let's do that again. Palms together, thumbs together, backs of the hands together, bend into the elbows, thumbs go to the breastbone. We roll through the wrists and open it up. Actually, heck, let's do that again. Palms together, thumbs together, backs of the hands together, thumbs to breastbone. Roll the palms open, inhale, sweeping the hands up nice and high, lengthen, 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 and coming into our first downward facing dog, we place the hands underneath the shoulders, tuck the toes underneath, and let's pop the knees off the ground and send the tailbone up and back as we lengthen the arms, lengthen the back of the neck, and drop the heels down towards the ground. Inhale, pull the navel in, and let's walk out the back of the legs. Use this opportunity now to warm up the ankles. So maybe give them just a little bit of a roll from side to side. Spread the toes. Don't worry too much about how the shape looks at the moment. But the one thing we do want to do is roll the shoulders away from the ears. Soften into the elbows. Make sure that you're not locking the arms out. Lengthen into the back of the neck. And maybe just take a half step forward. So we get that tailbone up just that little bit higher. Keep walking, shaking the bum from side to side. One more breath. And then coming down onto your hands and your knees. Let's bring the chest down between the hands. We're going to go knees, chest, chin. Knees are down, chest comes between the hands. We touch the chin to the ground. Then with the toes tucked under, press with the toes. And we're going to push ourselves forward, coming onto the thighs. And then roll the shoulders back, lifting up into your... Um, Cobra pose. Heart is open, spine is long. Exhale, tuck the toes under, press backwards to downward facing dog. One breath, tailbone up. Exhale, heels down. Inhale, come forward into plank. Exhale, lower the chest between the hands. Inhale, roll forward into your cobra pose, taking the back bend. Exhale, toes under, press backwards, downward facing dog. One breath, inhale, tailbone comes up. Exhale, relax the shoulders, send the heels down to the ground. Inhale, look forward, coming into plank pose. Shoulders above the wrists. Exhale, you can go knees, chest, chin, or you can drop yourself down in one straight line to the ground. Inhale, back up into cobra, lengthen. Exhale, press back, downward facing dog. One breath, inhale, tailbone comes up. Exhale, heels go down. Inhale, look forward, plank pose. Exhale, chest between the hands or knees, chest, chin. Choice is yours. Inhale, back bend. We stretch and lengthen. Exhale, toes under, downward facing dog. This time we're going to take five breaths in our downward facing dog. Roll back through the shoulders. And maybe just give yourself a little bit of space. 
Take half a step in, see if you can get that bum up a little bit higher and definitely soften into your elbows. We are going to do a few dolphin poses a little bit later. So maybe bend into the elbows slightly and imagine coming down onto the forearms. You can come onto the forearms if you really want to, but just can make sure that you're ready, that you're prepared for what's coming up a little bit later. Last breath here. And then looking to the front of the mat, let's bend both knees and walk up to the front, all the way up to the front. Bend the knees as much as you need to, to keep in the deep forward fold. Hands to shins, inhale up halfway, we heel toe the feet underneath the hips. Tuck the chin in the length of the back of the neck. Exhale, Uttanasana, all the way down to the ground, round and fold, and then root to rise. Inhale, pressing with the feet, sweep the hands up the sides of the walls. Palms meet above the head, and exhale, bring the prayer down through the center line. <laughs> finding Tadasana Mountain Pose. Inhale, let's sweep the hands up again, lengthen with the body. Exhale, soften into the knees, hinge and fold, releasing the hands down to the ground. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway lift. You're going to take both hands down and step or jump both feet back. Ah, choice is yours. I'm going to step my feet back because it's the first one. The chest is over the hands and we know where we're going. Exhale, lower the chest between the hands. Push with the toes, coming up into your cobra pose. And take the tops of the feet to the mat and press down with the thighs. Engage the lower back here. One more breath in our um, cobra. Then toes under and push back down with facing dog. Three breaths in down dog. Let's hold the posture this time. We walked out the last two. Pull the navel in, get that tailbone to lip a little bit higher, and press backwards with the heels. Let's try and get the heels down. Engage through the knees, engage through the hip crease to lift the bum up. And I realize it's a bit counterintuitive to getting the heels down, but it helps us with the structure. Last breath here. Bending both knees, three little bunny hops up to the front of the mat. Hands to shins, inhale up halfway, lengthen the body. Exhale, release down, forward fold. Inhale, root to rise, sweeping the hands up the sides of the walls, palms meet above the head. Exhale, bring the prayer down through the center line. Inhale, sweep the hands up again to lengthen. Exhale, hinge and fold. Number two out of three. Hands to shins, halfway lift. Nice long breaths as you take both hands down, step or jump, both feet back out, high plank. And once again, if you want to go down to the knees, go knees, chest, chin. It's a nice way to set yourself up for the back bend. Keeping the shoulders above the wrists, elbows floating in between. Exhale, downward facing dog, three breaths. Do a little shoulder press here. And make sure that the back of the neck is long, the gaze going in between the ankles or the knees. Or if you're feeling particularly adventurous, send the gaze all the way up to the navel. Lengthen out the back of the neck and press backwards with the palms. Last breath. Bending both knees, one big jump up to the front of the mat. Hands to shins, inhale up halfway. We lengthen, pull the tops of the arms back. Exhale, soften and fold. Inhale, root to rise, reaching the hands up to the sky, palms meet. Exhale, prayer down through the center line. This one we're going to modify. So coming to the front of the mat, bring the big toes together, heels slightly apart. Inhale, sweep the hands up and keep them up. Exhale, um, Utkatasana, chair pose. Bend into the knees, drop the bum down. Just one breath in the chair. Inhale, look up to the thumbs. Exhale, root and fold. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway lift. Taking both hands down, step or jump, both feet back out, high plank. And we vinyasa, either down to the knees, knees, chest, chin, or chest between the hands, going through Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, back bend, we lengthen. Exhale, push backwards. Downward facing dog. Three breaths in the downward dog. As we start to prepare for our little bit of core exercise, and also getting, making sure that we've found a balance of that fire in the body. So we're going to be doing some really aggressive breathing. And then we're going to be doing some long holds to counteract that. Last breath here. And then coming down onto the knees. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders. We're going to take another three cat cows. Inhale, tailbone up, belly down, chest forward. Really open up through the hip crease as we do this. Exhale, tuck the tailbone in, pull the navel in, and bring all of the attention into the belly as you squeeze your air out. Two, cow pose. 
Exhale, two for cat. Inhale, three for cow pose. Exhale, three for cat. Nice. And we're going to come from here into our forearm plank. So with the hands shoulder width distance apart, I want you to come down onto the forearms. Actually, let me just adjust my camera so you can see what's going on down there. Come on, guy, work with me. Excellent. Right, so we're going to come down onto the forearms. If you've never measured out your elbows before or your shoulders before, just grab hold of your opposite elbows. Get that distance and get the elbows underneath the shoulders and then point the fingers forward. Now, if you're anything like me, once you've got the hands down, it might feel like the forearm is a little bit twisted. So just keep that shape and just pop the forearms off. Allow the skin to reset itself and come back down. Right, so forearm plank. Let's step the left foot back first. Push backwards with the heel. Engage through the navel. Step the right foot back to meet it. Now remember, if these planks are not your thing and you are suffering through them, drop down to the knees at any stage, but keep as straight a spine as possible. If, however, you're up for the challenge, we're going to move into one round of 36 kapal bhakti. Inhale nice and deeply and using the navel. Let's go. Push it into the core. Allowing that fire to build like a bellows. Six. And inhale, exhale, come down onto your knees and drop the bum down to towards the heels as you push back into your extended child's pose. Lengthen out the lower back and stretch, 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 stretch. Try not to leave the shape in your arms, but keep the forearms down because we're going to transfer back into a similar position. One more nice deep breath here. And then looking forward towards the hands. The forearms are going to stay down. We're going to tuck the toes underneath. And we're going to come into our dolphin pose. So that's our downward facing dog on the forearms. If this is not available for you, feel free to go back to the forearm plank. Or even say, take a standard downward facing dog. So toes under. Boom. Tailbone comes up. We lengthen the back of the neck. Inhale. Pull the navel in. And exhale. Press the heels down to the ground. Now this is great for the core. This is great for the shoulders, and it's a great test of your um, fortitude, your ability to be able to breathe through positions, positions that are quite hard. Because to activate this, you're activating the core, you're activating the muscles around the ribs. It's going to make it more difficult to breathe. Three more. Inhale. If you want to, take another little half step to get a little bit closer towards the, um, to take the feet a little bit closer towards the elbows. And two. And one. And now we're going to be really fancy because we're rooting the palms down. We're going to pick the elbows up and send ourselves back into a downward facing dog. Adjust if necessary. Relax the shoulders away from the ears for four. Three, two, and one. And then making your way up to the front of the mat. You can either walk or you can step or you can jump or you can attempt to handstand all the way up to the front. Hands to shins, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, soften and fold forward. Inhale, root to rise, pressing with the feet, reaching the hands up to the sky. Exhale, bring the prayer down through the center line. Now we're going to move back into our dancing warriors. Some of you have done this with me before, some of you may not have. So in accordance with the way that we do this, the first one, we're going to take three or four breaths per posture. The next four per side, we're going to do one breath per posture. Beginning at the front of the mat, big toes together, heels slightly apart, we find Tadasana Mountain Pose. Lengthen the spine, relax the shoulders. Everything through that central line, from the balls of your feet to the heels of your feet, lifting up through the legs, from the pelvis, through the navel center, right down to the crown of the head. We're lifting. We're allowing ourselves to have structure, and then we're relaxing into that structure as we breathe and balance. We're going to move, do the right hand side first. 
And our first posture is Vira Bhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. So stepping the right foot to the back of the mat, nice and long, our Prasarita stance. We twist towards the right hand side. Our feet, the left foot is going uh, towards the front of the mat. The right foot is going to the long end of the mat. Inhale, pick the hands up shoulder height and bend into the left knee, allowing the body's weight to sink down. If you find the left knee going past the left ankle, just heel toe the foot a little bit forward and allow yourself to bend down and keep the center of gravity low. The right foot is pressing back. The head is above the heart. The heart is above the pelvis, although the gaze is going down the left arm to the front of the mat. Now, if you've been to a yoga class, there's a good chance you've done a warrior two before. So we have a fair idea of the shape. When we go through the big flows, don't worry too much about the shape and the structure. Just know where the body should be and let yourself move without um, violence, without fear of repercussion. Right, moving into the next posture is our reversed warrior. So right hand comes down to right hip, left hand reaches up and over. Relax the shoulders. This is a side body stretch. We want to feel it all the way through the left hand side of the body as the legs engage, Lift to lengthen and stretch backwards. Now the legs, are, you don't notice, they're going to stay exactly where they are. Our third posture brings the left elbow down to the left knee and brings the right arm up and over into our extended side angle pose. Now remember, this is not a forward fold at any stage, but we're still twisting open towards the right hand side and sending the attentional focus up and over with the hand and back and down with the right foot. Inhale, twist open and roll the right shoulder back and look up to the sky. Make sure that that knee is also, the left knee is chasing the left big toe. We don't want the knee going in. We need a lot of firmament in those legs. Right, picking ourselves back up into warrior two. Inhale, come up, Vira Bhadrasana two. Now we've been here before, so let's not hang out too long. On our next inhale, we're going to take the hands to the hips and step the right foot up to the front of the mat. Hands come to prayer in front of the heart center, and then you exhale and ground yourself down. Now, if you're looking at me, you can see I was not grounded at all because I wasn't paying attention to where my body was. Right, moving on to the left-hand side. Two or three breaths per posture. Stepping the left foot back, nice and long. We twist open to the left and bend into the left knee. Hands up, shoulder height, Vira Bhadrasana 2. Our gaze goes down the front arm. Relax the shoulders and allow yourself to sink into the posture. These legs are going to be here for the next five breaths. So make sure you're as comfortable as possible. Left hand to left hip. We reverse the warrior. Right arm coming up to lengthen. Keep the center of gravity low. Extended side angle. We take the right elbow to the right knee. Left arm comes up and over as we lengthen out the left hand side of the body. Remember, not a forward fold. But we're looking up to the sky and we're stretching. Back up into warrior two. Inhale, coming back up. Vira Bhadrasana two. And then inhaling to the front of the mat. We bring the hands together in prayer. And the most important part, exhale. We ground down. Now let's move a little bit faster. Stepping the right foot back. Inhale, warrior two. On your exhale, take the right hand down, left hand up, reverse the warrior. On your inhale, the extended side angle, left elbow to left knee, right hand coming up and over. On your next exhale, you come back up into your warrior two. On the inhale, we step up to the front of the mat, hands to prayer at the heart center. And importantly, exhale, we ground down. Stepping the left foot back, inhale, warrior two. On the exhale, we reverse the warrior. Keep your center of gravity low. Bend into the front knee. Right elbow to right knee. We find our extended side angle on the exhale. Um, sorry, coming back up to warrior two on the exhale. That's where we should have been. My apologies. We inhale to the front of the mat. And we exhale to ground down. Let me go through those breaths again. Inhale, step the right foot back, warrior two. Exhale, we reverse the warrior. Inhale, we come to our extended side angle pose. Engage through your core here. Back up to warrior two on the exhale. Inhale, step up to the front of the mat. Exhale, ground down to the left for number three. Inhale, warrior two, bend into the front knee. Exhale, reverse the warrior. 
Inhale, extended side angle pose. Back up into warrior two. Inhale to the front of the mat. And exhale, ground down. Now I'm going to see if I can do it just in Sanskrit. Vira Bhadrasana two. Aparavrita Vrikanasana. Utita Pasvakanasana. Vira Bhadrasana two. Uh, I can't remember what this is called. <laughs> and Tadasana. <laughs> Going back with the left leg. Warrior two. Nice and low. And allow the breath to let you flow through these postures. Like our element of fire, we let the arms lap up. And by now we should be making our way to the front of the mat. Our last round. Inhale, right leg back, our strong warrior. We reverse the warrior, the humble warrior. We take the right, uh, sorry, left elbow down to the left knee, lengthen the side of the body. Back up to our warrior two. Inhale to the front of the mat. Exhale to ground down. Last one. Inhale back with the left bend into the right knee. Lift to lengthen as we stretch out the side body. Taking the right elbow down to the right knee, we stretch out the left. Back up to warrior two. Inhaling to the front of the mat. Exhaling to ground down. Heel toe the feet out so that they're hip width distance apart. We're going to take a, um, a forward fold. Inhale, sweep the hands up the sides of the walls and lengthen. And then softening into the knees, hinge at the hips and allow yourself to fold, getting the belly and the chest onto the tops of the thighs. And if the hands don't touch the ground, holding onto your opposite elbows. If the hands do touch the ground, trigger fingers around the big toes. Inhale, put some length in the back of the legs as you stretch. And exhale, release the crown of the head down for five breaths. Uttanasana, deep forward fold. Inhale to find length in the back of the legs. And exhale just to release down. That's looking good. That's great. The feet can be hip width distance apart. They can be a little bit wider. Choice is yours. It depends on how deep you want to go into the back of the leg. For three. And two. And inhale, come back to center and come up halfway. This time I'm going to heel toe the feet right together. And bending into the knees, take both hands down to the ground and step or jump both feet back out, high plank. Exhale, lowering down through Chaturanga Dandasana or down to the ground. Inhale, take a back bend as we vinyasa. Exhale, toes under into downward facing dog. And then dropping down onto the knees. Open up the knees as wide as the mat. Big toes together. Bring the tops of the feet to the mat. Press back into your extended child's pose. We're going to keep this dynamic, however. We're going to do a side body stretch. Inhale, look forward towards the hands. And exhale, walk the hands across to the left-hand side and reach the right arm over. Inhale, come back to the center. And exhale, go across to the right. Nice long breaths. Two more to each side. Inhale back to center and exhale left hand roots right arm reaches inhale back to center exhale right hand roots left arm reaches sink down last one to the left last one to the right Coming back to neutral, bringing the knees back together. We're going to go down onto our bums. So either swing the feet to the side or crossing the legs behind you. Roll over onto your bum as we transition into seated. Legs come out in front of you. Feet towards the end of the mat. Hands underneath the knees. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. Pull the tops of the arms back as we're holding onto the backs of the legs. Feet are nice and active here. Push out with the heels and lengthen through the body. Bending into the knees, let's get the heels up towards the bum. Pull the thighs together as we find Navasana, our boat pose. Feet come off the ground, and you can hold on to the knees and feel free to stay here. Engage through the core and don't round the spine. Or if you'd like to take it a little bit further, bring the feet up level with the eyes and release the hands to open the palms to the sky. This is still technically our half boat pose, but it's a good place to be. 
Four more breaths here, engaging through the thighs. We want to keep the knees as close to the heart center as we can, engaging through that whole core, using a lot of the same muscles that we would in our uh, downward facing dog, funny enough. Let's lengthen the legs out now, stretch them out and lower the body down halfway. You might feel a little bit of a shake in the belly and that's good because we're gonna go work right into that shake and we're going to have 36 couple body. Inhale nice and deep and let's go. Inhale, and exhale, release down to the ground. Bending into the knees, walk the heels up to the bum. Tuck the chin in to lengthen the back of the neck and let's windshield wipe of the legs from left to right. You do this for a good 30 seconds, link it with your breath. And now that we've stimulated that fire in the belly, we use these little twists just to help distribute it through the body. <clears throat> and last one coming back to center hinge at the hips bring the knees into the chest and we're going to rock ourselves back up into seated so either rolling onto the right hand side <coughs> sorry excuse me either rolling onto the right hand side and picking yourself up at the left hand or rock and roll along the length of the spine to pick yourself up into Sukhasana easy posture. Ankles underneath the knees, head above heart, heart above pelvis. Inhale, sweep the hands up as we lengthen. Exhale down into cactus arms. Let's take some twists. Pull the navel back to lengthen. Inhale, we find length. Exhale, we twist towards the left, opening up the heart to the left hand side. Inhale, come back to center. Just pay attention to the lower part of your spine initially as we're doing this. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, we twist to the left. So just on the inhale, come back to center. Exhale, twist between the um, tailbone and the navel. Just there. Get in nice and deep. Inhaling to the front, exhaling into the twists. And if that's already a bit of a strain, if that's a bit of an effort, maybe because you twist mostly from the shoulders, that may be an effort. And maybe you want to work on that. Or maybe we can start to take it like we do with our cat cows and working from the tailbone up to the crown of the head. Not going into a deep twist, but a dynamic twist. Side to side to side to side. We don't have to rush it, we don't have to force it. Of course, if you want to go a lot faster, feel free to do that. But I urge you to err on the side of compassion and a little bit of cautious adventure. Three more breaths. And coming back to center, inhale, reach the hands up. Exhale, swan diving the hands behind you. I'm going to bring the hands just behind the shoulders, fingers pointing towards the toes. Root down with the palms, lift the heart center up, lengthen the back of the neck. If this is already a challenge for you, feel free to stay here or bring in the legs together. Point the toes out and inhale, lift the bum up off the ground as you lengthen the spine. Five nice deep breaths in our reverse plank. Inhale to find the length. Exhale, keep the heart center open. And remember, if you're not picking the bum up, that's fine. Oh, my apologies. Just make sure that we're lifting the heart, pulling the shoulder blades back together and engaging. Last one here. And exhale, come down slowly, 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 releasing the bum between the hands. Let's take ourselves all the way down onto the back again, lowering down, hinging at the hips, bring the knees into the chest and gently rock from side to side. Get some length in the lower back, maybe roll through the ankles as well, a panasana. Two. And last one. Then soles of the feet back down to the ground. Bring the soles of the feet together and open up the knees like a book, Supta Bada Kanasana. I want you to take the hands and rest them either on the thighs or on the tops of the pelvis. Relax the shoulder blades back and down and lengthen into the back of the neck. Take five breaths here. 
Just to let the breath settle, let the energy settle, just find where you are, note how the body feels. Three. And two. And one. Keeping the soles of the feet together, we're going to pick the feet up off the ground. And then sliding the hands between the knees, either taking the shins, the ankles, or the outsides of the feet, we open up the soles of the feet towards the sky. And under Balasana, happy baby pose. And once again, I invite you to rock from side to side. Lengthen through the abdomen and really pull the thighs in. Give the arms a good bit of a squeeze. So you can really feel that in the thighs. You can feel that in the abdomen, maybe in the lower back as we try and lengthen that out. One more breath here. And then releasing the feet, bring the soles of the feet back down to the ground. Heels close to the bum, feet hip width distance apart. We're going to raise up into a series of three hip bridges, all three five breaths. So pressing with the feet, tuck, keep the chin tucked in, lift the hips up above the sky. Hands can either come underneath the buttocks to lift you up that little bit further, or interlace the hands behind the back and press the backs of the arms into the ground to keep the body high and long. Three more breaths. Sukta Bandha. Oh, no, that's the wrong name. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Setu Bandha Sarvangasana. The chin is tucked in. We're not taking any weight in the neck, no weight in the head, but we're stretching through the front of the hip crease. Looking good. Last breath. And exhale. Come down slowly, vertebra by vertebra, gently releasing the spine to the ground. When the tailbone touches, hinge at the hips and bring the knees into the chest. Wrap the hands around the legs. Give yourself a nice big hug for three. And two. And one. Release the soles of the feet back down to the ground. Once again, we raise straight up into our hip bridge, lifting the hips up. The hands, once again, underneath the hips or underneath the back. Press into the ground and pull the shoulder blades together. Make sure that the ankles are underneath the knees. That's going to give you the best bit of geometry to help pick the bum up with as little effort as possible. For those of you that would like to take it a little bit deeper, let's press with the right foot and pick the left leg up, pointing the left leg up, up towards the sky. Lengthen the front of the ankle, pointing the toes out like a ballerina, but we keep the tailbone tucked under and we lift, 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 lift. Exhale, come back down and swap it over, pressing with the left foot. And just two breaths, inhale, point the toes out. Don't let the bum go back down towards the heels. Keep lifting and lengthening, pulling everything into the central line. Exhale, come back down again. Right foot down, vertebra by vertebra. We sink to the ground, adjust the spine if necessary. And hinging at the hips, bring the left knee into the left hand, the right knee into the right hand, and circle the knees, checking in with the ball and socket joint of the hip. Three nice big circles in one direction. Maybe roll the ankles. Three nice big circles in the other. And then up into our final bit of back bending, a final little bit of heart opening. If you have a full wheel in your practice, you can do the full wheel. Otherwise, come up back up into another hip bridge. Sit so soles of the feet, come back down to the ground. Ankles, up, uh, ankles underneath the knees. We press with the feet, lifting the bum up. Now, if you have the wheel, bring the hands underneath the shoulders. If you don't have the wheel and you'd like to test it out, maybe just bring the hands underneath the shoulders with the fingers pointing towards the toes anyway. And get the palms down. Keep the hips as high as possible. Just three more breaths here. And maybe just work on rooting the hands down, finding where the lift is, pressing with the elbows. Two. And last one. Exhale, release, come down. Let's get the hands released. Bring the knees back up into the chest. Once again, we rock from side to side for three. And two. And one. Grabbing the legs behind the knees. Let's push the heels up towards the sky. Lengthen the backs of the legs. Stretch them out, stretch the toes. Pulling the backs of the arms back to keep the heart center long and the spine straight. Spread the toes and lengthen. 
Then releasing the hands, bring the hands next to the body, palms slide down. Take a nice deep breath and as you exhale, pike the legs all the way down to the ground. When the heels touch, let the feet flop open and open the palms towards the sky to find Shavasana, the corpse pose. And we're going to take, oh, a good five minutes here. So if you'd like to put on any socks or any jerseys for the meditation, now is your time to do so. Make yourself comfortable, maybe grab that sip of water that you've been desperately needing. Or if you'd like to, maybe light your favorite incense. Grab a cushion, grab a blanket, but make yourself a space where you don't need to move. Where you can just relax. And you can just be for the next few moments. Peace and universal love are the essence of every gospel preached by every enlightened being. The ancients that we knew, they, 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 peached, they preached peace as the Dharma. Saying things like, I forgive all. And let all other creatures forgive me. I extend love to all and hatred to none. Violence is the root cause of many of the world's miseries. Violence, as they say in the Jain tradition, is the knot of bondage. To counteract violence, we have ahimsa. Do no injury to any living being. This is the altern uh, This is sorry. The, this is the eternal and undeniable way of a spiritual life. A weapon, however powerful it is, will always be superseded. By a superior weapon. No weapon, however, will ever be stronger than the power of love. Believe in the goodness of your soul. Through all adversity, it has brought you here, to this point, here and now. Sometimes it's a little bit more conscious, sometimes it isn't. Don't be too harsh on yourself. But treat yourself with the same respect and the same dignity as you would any other living creature. This is the true spirit of Ahimsa. This is the true spirit of nonviolence. I'm going to leave you in silence for the next three minutes. Don't worry, I've got the time. Just allow yourself a few moments to relax and just chill out.
be aware of your body as it lies on the mat in this room. Be aware of the breath as it flows in and out. Be aware of the mind, its thoughts, its feelings. And if thoughts of doubt, self-doubt, self-deprecation start to come to your mind, allow yourself to feed those thoughts to the fire in your belly. Rest assured, it's okay not to be okay. But sometimes it's just good to take the stuff we don't need, to place it into that sacrificial flame and to let it move away. Take a nice deep breath, the deepest breath you've taken the whole day. Fill the body up full of air. As you inhale and you bring that air in, as soon as you feel full, hold it for a second. And then as you exhale, give it a good sigh. Once again, vocalizing through the throat. Inhale, fill the body up nice and deep and expand. As you exhale, sigh. The voice is prana in action. Inhale, fill the body up once again. And sigh. Let's prepare again for motion by wiggling fingers and toes. Roll through the wrists and the ankles one way and the other. Roll the shoulders back. Maybe give the bum a little bit of a shake. Then let's get a bend into the knees. Walk the heels up to the bum. Inhale, pick the knees up into the chest, and as you exhale, wrap the hands around the legs and give yourself a big squeeze. Inhale, congratulate yourself on a well job well done, <laughs> and exhale, give yourself another big squeeze. We're then going to make our way up into a seat, so either rolling from side to side onto the right-hand side or rocking and rolling along the length of the spine. Pick yourself up. Let's once again meet in Sukhasana, our comfortable seated position. We are, however, going to just end up with a little bit more pranayama before we close today's practice. So let's sit up nice and tall. You can take the palms of the hands down to the knees, fingertips facing down. First things first, five ujjayi breath, just to settle the um, mind and body. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. Settle the thoughts. That's what I was trying to think of. Exhale, allow the shoulders to relax. It's an ujjayi, so there's a bit of activation in the throat. Same breath we use when we must up a mirror. As we take our third inhale, when we go for our sixths, we're going to move into our lion's breath. Fourth inhale comes in, and if you're not too sure what that is on your exhale on the sixth breath, you're going to stick the tongue out, cross the eyes, and make as much noise as you can. Make the noise of a lion. Number five, we prepare ourselves for this wonderful experience. Exhale. On our next inhale, we prepare ourselves. Exhale, tongue out, cross the eyes, and roar. Inhale, fill the body up full of air. Number two of three. <laughs> Inhale, last one. And... <laughs> On your next inhale, sweep the hands up the sides of the walls. Reach up to the heavens as we lengthen, lengthen, lengthen hands to prayer. Prayer down to between the eyes. On your quest for balance, my friends, may peace be with your thoughts. We lower the prayer in front of the mouth. On your quest for courage, my friends, may peace be with your actions. And then we lower the prayer in front of the heart center. In your quest for life, my friends, may peace be with your hearts. Please can we close this practice with a chanting of one Om. Inhaling through the nose. Oh. 
May we be the lights that lead us out of the darkness. Thank you for your time and thank you for your efforts, friends. It's been a weird old day, but I'm so glad that I got to end it off by sharing a beautiful practice with you. So thank you very much. Take care of yourselves, friends. I look forward to seeing you all again soon. If anybody's got anything to say, feel free to add it to the comments or chat. Go, it's all yours. I'm done. <laughs>